Hey guys, Viper 6. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a funny story. A funny, but still pissed off over it. <clears throat> Earlier this year, we went to uh, Cabo San Lucas for a week and uh, stayed at uh, the Ryu Palace. And that's in Mexico. It was, it was really good. I gained five pounds because I ate like a pig and the food was amazing. I can't complain over that. But uh, it's, all, it's all good at, after you get past all the timeshare people. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> then on the way back, I have this mini tripod that I use for my GoPro cameras and my other and my other camera <laughs> and that thing's traveled with me everywhere and I usually bring it in, bring it with me on my carry-on so it's it's really small but it's a high-end one we paid it on sale for $79.95 and uh, <clears throat> the lady the girl at the airport security runs it through the x-ray and says ah que bonito and to me, that immediately meant to me, because I'm fluent in Spanish, but they don't know this at this point, because I'm speaking English. It immediately meant to me that this lady wants my tripod. So she immediately comes, grabs the bag, comes to me at the end of the counter and says, I need to check your bag. And I go, okay. She goes straight for the tripod. She says, this is illegal. And I go, well, why is it illegal? She says, because it's illegal. I said, okay. If it's illegal, you should have some documentation for that proves it's illegal. So please pull out the documentation you have that says that this tripod is illegal. So she rolls her eyes, walks away, comes back with these two white binders and starts flipping through pages of all pictures of things that are illegal to bring on a plane. And then he immediately points to this picture. So I look at the picture and I go, that's a fishing rod. This is not a fishing rod. It's a tripod. Says it's illegal. I go, okay, can you get your manager, please? So she doesn't get the manager. She gets the other bonehead that works on the other lane. He comes over and he says, this is illegal because it extends over 45 centimeters. I said, okay, we haven't opened it. So how do you know it extends past 45 centimeters? Well, it's illegal. So I said, okay, so you're not going to let me on this plane with my tripod. Is that true? And he goes, yes, sir. So then I start speaking Spanish. I said, okay, you know what? When I came through, and I'm saying this all in Spanish, the lady said, ah, que bonito. And I immediately knew that I wasn't leaving with this tripod because she wants it or someone in her family needs this tripod. So I said, so here's what I'm going to do. I open, I, I extend the legs of the tripod and I snap all three legs off. Mangle it, give it back to him, and I said, if I can't leave with this tripod and I can't use it, neither will she. He grabs the tripod, looks at me, throws it in the garbage, and I say, can I go now? See? And I left. <laughs> so my wife says, that was pretty gutsy of you. You challenged them the whole way, but yeah, I know, you know, they were just fishing for an excuse on why they wanted this tripod, so. What can you do, guys? Sometimes, you know, like, it's too bad, because I, I like Mexico, but it's twice, you know, that I, I encounter stuff like that that kind of puts a sour into it. Well, the last time was uh, with Air Transat. I went there with uh, a 20-pound suitcase. And I bought one t-shirt. They weigh my suitcase when I'm leaving and they say, it's overweight, you need to pay $10. I go, what do you mean it's overweight? I left it was like 22.5 pounds. I bought one t-shirt and now you're telling me it's 45 pounds? It's overweight? I go, yeah. I said, come on, man. Let's try another scale. He says, no, you have to pay $10. So in other words, you want to go home, you got to give me 10 bucks. And that was the second pain in the ass thing that I went through. But besides that, you know, like, it was good. It's too bad, because the people, I like the people, you know, they're friendly, they're, they, they, they aim to please. 
and one of my subs, Hector, lives over there. I think he lives in Mexico City. It would be cool if he could come here one day. He's one of uh, Marvon Chronicles' friends. And uh, we can do some rides. Show him the Rockies. I still have to hit the Rockies this year with the bike. I, I went with the truck and uh, I bought the park pass because uh, our new prime minister here, because it's national park year or something, said if you buy a park pass, instead of it being valid for one year, it's going to be valid for two years. So that's kind of cool. So it saves me paying 29 bucks every time I go in there. bike is nice but it it, it kind of makes you want to go fast and then you know like last during the what, last week yeah last week I hop on the cruiser first of all as soon as I get on I kick the thing into <laughs> the wrong gear because I put my feet too far back because I'm used to this right you gotta move way forward because it's got a heel shifter so And then, like, I'm giving it gas and it's not going anywhere. Well, it's going, but I got used to this thing. So it's like, come on. It takes a while to get used to again. And then you got to downshift a lot later because or else you'll send those two little, those two big pistons right through the cylinder heads. This thing likes to whine. That one does not like to whine. But, you know, it's a completely different feeling, right? This one is the exciting bike, and the cruiser, once you get on it, you know, you mellow out a bit, and it's more badass. Like, it's got the sound, you get the looks, you know, and people go, yeah, okay, I don't want to mess with this guy. So, it's kind of cool looking. Now I'm heading home because I have to prune a tree, empty a hot tub, and like I said, Probably gonna take the cruiser out later tonight. <laughs> yeah, last week I almost got killed on the bike. Dual turn. I'm on the outside, she's on the inside. And we're going under an overpass. And as we take the turn, as soon as we finish the turn, she starts, just moves right over. I was like hitting the brake, honking, squeezing the wall, doing anything I can not to get touched by her. And she, she starts going into panic mode and uh, waving her hands and apologies and this and that. And then we get the red light. I said, okay, I understand you apologize. But if a guy is honking, get back in your freaking lane. Don't continue freaking him up. Hopefully she got that message. Because that's the part I don't get. Like 50% of the people will move back in their lane if you honk. The other 50%, oh, okay, well, he's honking. Okay, too bad. I'm still coming over. It's like, what the frig are you doing? On my cruiser, I do this at 70. This one, you can do it a little faster. You got to like that. And I still took it easy. JF Noel, if you're watching this video, congratulations on the new badass bike. She is super sweet. Even my wife likes it. And she's not a bike person. I like that. And that's in standard mode, which is detuned. And we have a bike up ahead. Oh yeah, last a couple a couple of weeks ago, we had a bit of a tragedy in our neighborhood. You're gonna notice. Uh, a lot of blue ribbons like on this post and like every tree, every fence post, every railing. What happened was uh, 
and this is like two blocks away from my house. This guy gets in his truck because he's got to go shopping. Uh, backs up, doesn't realize his daughter's behind the truck and just rode, drove the truck right over her. She was in critical condition for a week and then finally lost the fight. She died a few days ago. So people out of support tied all these ribbons all over the place to show that we care. And uh, they also started a GoFundMe. They raised like 97000 bucks, and that's going to help pay for uh, the lost wages because they're not going to work and the funeral. And uh, I'm sure that they're going to need some sort of counseling. And they'll have money left over. But it's nice, you know, when you... You never know what kind of community you live in, you know, until something crappy happens and then you see all this outpour of love, you know. And there you go. The guy with the big bags. And the skinny jacket. And what a nice warm day. Yeah, look at all those blue ribbons out there. Oh, he's got a 46 helmet. I've got a 46 jacket. Yeah, this pisses me off over here. This used to be a school zone. So you, when there was no school, you were allowed to go 50 kilometers an hour. And now they changed all the school zones to playground zones. So from 7.30 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, you have to do 30 kilometers an hour. And over here, there is a lot of days you'll see a van, a pickup truck, something. And it's got this flash on the roof, so you spot them a mile away. And it's a uh, photo radar. I know, I got nailed. Oh good, no traffic. No car coming. Let's take the curve to turn a little quicker. And when we started off over here, there were only three bikes on this road. Now there's like nine. So that's cool. All this midlife crisis going on and stuff. You gotta love it. Midlife crisis equals motorcycle. There you go, blue ribbon. They put one even there and they put one on my tree. And my truck is filthy. And there you go. Yep, you're gonna get pruned, my friend. Oh, why did I shut it off? No worries. This is what I, I meant to shut off the camera. Later, guys.